children, praise the Lord. We are back once again for our Bible club. This is from a Christian Revival Center in Nakuru. My name is Mama Kisumu and I love Jesus. Has the Lord been your friend the whole week? Have you told somebody else about the stories that we normally listen from our Bible club? Well, if you have done that, then that is a plus for you. And if you are joining us, you are most welcome. We are having Bible club. It's a series of a lot of play, fun, and laughter. Now, today, I want us to open our Bibles. Remember I told you to, be, uh, to get a Bible, to learn to read your Bible, and to have a notebook, to note somewhere the stories that we see, we, we, we see over here. And if you're not able to catch up with the writing, you can listen and then you write later. And to tell somebody else about the stories that you normally get from here. Because this, this is an opportunity many children do not have. But because you have the opportunity, I want you to be able to tell somebody else about the story that you are tell, uh, we, we talk about in this Bible club. Now, today we want to read uh, our Bibles, but before we read our Bibles, our topic today is on God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness. God will forgive you no matter what you have done. You know, sometimes you feel like you have done so much wrong that you think that God can never, ever, ever forgive you for the things that you do. But let me tell you, my dear child, that God is all loving, is all caring, is all merciful. As long as you ask him for forgiveness, he will forgive you. Only do it from your, from your heart. Okay? Now, let us open our Bibles. In the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Our memory verse will also come from there. So I want us to read the whole chapter, uh, the whole verse. Although I have put my verse in, uh, in a segment because there is what I want you to learn about forgiveness. But this is the way it goes. Are you there? Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Let's go again. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Yes, repentance. I'm going to tell you a story about a boy who really wanted repentance and he really, really had to ask for that repentance. And then I will tell you what our story means. So, there was this boy who was very naughty, very, very naughty. And beyond naughty, he was very rude, arrogant, and he did not want to listen to anything that the father would tell him. And so he went and did all the bad things that you can think of. He was stealing, he was going into people's houses and picking things that were not his. Don't forget that when you pick something that is not yours, that does not belong to you, and the owner does not know, you are a thief. So this boy was a thief, he was a robber, and he would go to the streets and he would uh, rob cars and people and he would do all the bad things that you can think about. And he would come home with all the monies and all the things that he has robbed and he would, uh, the father would ask him, now what are these that you have brought? Where did you get all these things? And he would say, don't ask me. That is my work. That is the work of my hands. I have brought money. I have brought food. You come and eat what I have brought. And if you don't like it, you can stay. 
You know that is how some of us talk to our parents. Your parent will talk to you and ask you, what is this you brought home? Why did you bring this, fr this thing from school? Or why did you bring something that is not from that home? And instead of saying the truth about where you got that thing from, what do you do? Huh? You become rude and arrogant and you even sometimes go away. So, so many times this boy had been caught by the police and they were putting him in. And many are the times that the father would go and ask, please just forgive him, I will talk to him, I will, and then he would come out. But one day, the father was just tired. And he said, my son, if this is what you have chosen in life to do, then I don't know what else to say. But I will love you, and I will always, always love you. But this time round, if you are caught, I will not get you out. Ah, you know, Dad, I know you will always come for me. I know you will always come for me. And then he went out one night, and they went and robbed the bank. And after they had robbed the bank, they ran away, and when he was and in the process of running, they hit people al along the road with their car, and some and somebody died. And so this, uh, the police chased after them, and they got this guy. They were like, "It is you again!" He said, "Ah, it's all right. I know my father will come and get me out." And when he was taken in front of the judge, the judge told him, "You bad boy. Let me tell you." Now I'm going to really put you in and I will not listen to anybody. So he told him, I'm going to jail you and you will stay in for so long. You will, you will, until you come to your senses, you will be inside the jail for a very long time. Okay, they took the guy in and he was there when he found very bad, other bad, bad people in there. And sometimes they would knock him and hit him and sometimes they would, uh, do bad things to him and this guy was like oh is this the life I really wanted is this what I really wanted but you know when God has a way wants to save you he has to get a way of doing it and he used to send somebody into the prisons to come and preach to them just like we sit every Sunday and we listen to our our pastor preaching to us that is the same way. They would come and sit down and the pastor would come in and he would talk to them about the love of God and how God can forgive your sins and how God loves you and how God wants you to change and to become a good person. And years went and years came and we started counting three years and four years and five years and soon it was 15 years. Can you imagine 15 years in jail? How do you feel already with only three months in quarantine? You are under lock and key. You don't go out to play. You don't go out to work. You don't go out anywhere. You are just inside there. Sometimes it is very boring. But now imagine this man was going to be there, had been there for 15 years. 15 years are very many years. And then, slowly by slowly, one day, he decided, why don't I just open my heart? Because I have really been a bad boy, and I have really been a bad person, and here is this pastor who comes and preaches to us every day. Receive Jesus, read your Bible, pray every day, be a good person. I think I need to change. And so one day he decided, Lord, I want to change. I want to be a different person. I don't want to remain the way I am. I want to be a good man so that even when I get outside there, Lord, I will be a better person. I don't want to be a thief anymore and I don't want to steal and rob people. I don't want to make my father angry. Oh, Lord, forgive me. And you know, God is faithful. Because that is the only thing God is looking for. For you to say you are sorry. That is the only thing God wants you to do. So this man, after he said that, one day, 
they used to have a, a postman who used to come in and bring letters. Eh, so and so, eh, kama ujoroge, jenu mwekali, mama kisumu, who and who. And they would take the letters and they would read and they would be happy because the letters are from their relatives. So he went and sat down, he asked the prison, please give me um, a paper and a pen. I want to write a letter to my father. And it happened that the day that he wanted to write that letter, because he really thought hard, should I write him a letter? Should I tell him I'm sorry? Should I, what should I do? Will my father forgive me? Will, I, will he believe that I am a good boy? Because you know, when you are a bad child, everybody thinks you are bad. Even when you want to become a good person, they all think this one is a bad person. But you know what? When God forgives you, something about you changes. You just change, even your natural self changes. You just become a happy person. You become a, ha a good person. And so, because since he had given his life back to God and asked God for, to forgive him, he became a good prisoner. He started cleaning the cell. He would offer good things, uh, good uh, messages to people. Instead of abusing people inside there, he would now talk to them about the love of God and why it is good to change and to have a change of heart and why we need, you need to change so that one day you will go to heaven. And the wardens were so happy with him. And they told him, man, you, I think now it's time for you to go home. And they went and gave a good recommendation to the, 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 the warden in charge of the prison. And the warden in charge of the prison, he went to the president and the president gave out, um, he, he gave a good recommendation about this young man. And he said, okay, fine, he can go home. So when they came back, they were like, hey, come, come, come. You, you are going home today, tomorrow. Oh, really? But tomorrow, and I'm not even ready. Will my father forgive me? And they said, okay, fine. One week we are giving you. He was like, okay, fine. So he wrote a letter. Dear dad, I am sorry for everything I ever did to you. And I have been a good boy. Since I received Jesus in the prison, I have been allowed to go home, but dad, have you forgiven me? Do you still love me? They are going to release me after one week and they are going to put us on the train that leaves the prison to go to town. I know my way is along, uh, uh, along the way home. If you are going to forgive me, just put one handkerchief on the tree that is outside our door. And when the train passes and I see that handkerchief, I will stop the train and I will get out and I will know you have forgiven me. But if there is no handkerchief, I will know you did not forgive me and I will go on my way. And he closed it and he gave to the postman. And the postman took the letter to the father and he gave him, uh, sir, your, your son has given a letter from prison and here it is. And so the father took the letter and he was like, oh dear father. And he read and he read and he read and then he saw the part that said, if you, for, you have forgiven me, please put a white handkerchief on the tree that is outside our door. So that when the train passes, I will see the handkerchief and I will know you have forgiven me. Then I will stop the train and I will get out. And the father was like, oh, God, my son is coming back all these years. Lord, I thank you. And then the day came when they were supposed to be released. And the boy was like, I don't know, I'm going home, but I don't know if my father has forgiven me. He did not reply, so I don't know what I'm going to do. And his friends were like, you don't worry, if he has not forgiven you, we shall just go into town and we shall go, go and find out what to do. And so they got into the train. And you know, this guy was shot. And they, he was in the middle of the people in the train. Here is your train. 
And so he was in the middle here, and there were people all over the windows. And so the train started its journey going home. And the train started moving. And as it was moving, on the other end, there was the dad. The dad went and bought many handkerchiefs. Can you see the handkerchiefs I have here? There are many. And so he decided, I am going to put a handkerchief on every tree, every tree available, so that when that train passes, I am going, my son is going to see that I have forgiven him. So he started putting the tree, the handkerchiefs, on every possible tree. Here we are with my pegs and my handkerchiefs. And so he hung the handkerchiefs on every tree. Every place he could find, he put a handkerchief. My son is coming home. And he put a handkerchief. And he was like, yes, my son is coming home. I have to put a handkerchief on every tree, every plant. He decided to put a handkerchief everywhere. Everywhere he hung the handkerchief. And he was like, oh, Lord, my baby is coming home. I have to put a handkerchief. And he put the handkerchiefs there. And then, guess what? And so, the train started passing. Kuchu, 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 kuchu. And the boy was asking from inside, hello, hello, you on the windows, can you see any handkerchief? outside there. They were like, which handkerchief? We cannot see anything. Kuchu, 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 kuchu. Hey, you, on the windows, can you see any handkerchief yet? No, we cannot see any handkerchief. Chuk, 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 chuk. And then, all of a sudden, they started shouting, hey, did you say one handkerchief? No, yes, I said one. No, what we are seeing are many handkerchiefs. Many handkerchiefs hung all over. Everywhere there's a handkerchief. Hey, oh, really? Can you see? Yes, there are so many. There are so many handkerchiefs. And the train was passing and he was like, stop the train, stop the train. And the train went. <coughs> and then he got out. And do you know what? When he got out, who saw him coming out? The father. And the father ran. He ran towards the train, and the boy ran towards the father, and they hugged. And he told the father, I'm so sorry. Dad, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for the many things I did to you, the way I talked badly to you, the things I robbed people, and the, the way I was so rude and arrogant to you. And the father was like, it is OK, my son. I have forgiven you. I have forgiven you for all those bad things that you ever did to me. I have forgiven you. And he was like, Father, please. Have you really, really forgiven me? And he said, yes, I have really, really forgiven you. Come home. That is why I put all these handkerchiefs here, so that you can see them hanging, and then you can return home. And he took his son, and he put him in the house, and the train went, and everyone in the train was so happy when they saw the father and the son hugging. And they were like, yay, he has been forgiven. So let's keep going. And the train continued going towards the town. Do you know, boys and girls, my story today, this is what it is. God sent his son to die on the cross so that we can receive forgiveness. Do you see all these handkerchiefs? They represent God. They, they represent Jesus. And all the trees that they have been hung on, that is the cross that Jesus died on. The father of this son, he represents God. And the son represents us because we are sinners. Every day we do sin, every day we do wrong. But you see what? When we ask God to forgive us, God forgives us. And all the people who were in this little train going to town, those are the angels because they were all happy 
when you ask for forgiveness and you repent of your sin, the angels in heaven, they are always happy and they sing and they dance and they are happy and there's a lot of hallelujah and hosanna going on in heaven. Now, can you imagine how much more it will be for you if you become a good boy and girl, you ask Jesus to forgive you, ask him to come into your heart, ask him to live in your heart, to change you and to make you a better person. Imagine the joy that is going to be in heaven. They are going to be singing. They will pick up their guitars. They will pick up tambourines. They will pick up drums and they will sing and they will clap and they will be overjoyed because of you. When you receive Jesus, one person, one person, let me tell you, we have a memory verse behind me and my memory verse comes from Acts 3, 19. And what does it say? It says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. That is where I wanted you to reach. I know it is longer than that, but that is why on my memory verse, I put dash, dash, dash to continue. But that is where I want you to see. Look at it this way. Huh? Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. If you repent, God is going to forgive you. If you turn and ask God to forgive you, he is going to do that because he is a loving father. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to ask Jesus to come into your heart. Ask him to come into your life and let him change you to become a better boy and a better girl so that you don't have to, uh, to live a life of unforgiveness. If you ask Jesus into your life, he will do it. Can you do that? Let's close your eyes. Father, I am a sinner and I want to change. I want to become a better boy and a girl and I want to, be, to have you living in my heart. Please come and change me so that I can be forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me tell you, Jesus loves you. And it doesn't matter how big or how small the sin that you have done. But when you ask him, he will do it. He will forgive you. Just like that father forgave his son and put all many white handkerchiefs so that the son can know that he's forgiven. The same way, when we ask God to forgive us, he will forgive us. He will come and live in our hearts and he will hold us all the time so that we don't have to do bad things anymore. Don't be arrogant to your parents. When your mommy and your daddy tell you something, they know what they are saying. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Honor your parents. Listen to them. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And then one day, when we are being counted, those who will be entering heaven, you will be one of them because I will be there. So I want to thank you. For I think we have had a good time. Remember to tell a friend about the son who was forgiven because God forgives sin no matter how big they are. I love you. And God loves you. Until we meet next time, goodbye. We will go, we will be your